Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I'm in my garden. This is an old playhouse that my kids had that I converted into a hide to be able to take um, photos of the birds over the last couple of months. And it's been really good fun. I've been doing it with my daughter a little bit and we've got some great photos of the birds and, and I've just done it as a bit, a bit of entertainment. But then I, I started to take some photos. I've been using my 500 millimeter um, f5.6 lens on my Nikon Z6 and Z7. And I thought, what I need is a different location. This doesn't quite work for where the sun is. I can't quite shoot into the sun in the, in the evening or the morning, which is what I want to do. And I had a brainwave and I thought, I know what, I've got a fantastic idea of what I can convert into a bird hide. So I thought, I haven't used my camper van for a couple of months and it'd be a fantastic idea if I could get it onto my garden that I could use it as a bird hide. And at first I couldn't get it up here. I had to chop a few branches off some of the trees to get it onto my garden. But I'm lucky that I've got a reasonable sized garden and one area of it in the bottom corner here is perfect for bird photography. So what I've done is I've set up some bird feeders here. So the birds have got used to the area. Um, and now I've brought my camper van up and it's, I think it's going to be perfect. I'm going to be able to do two things in the video. I'm going to be able to show you around my camper van and talk a little bit more about sort of garden bird photography, which I'm sure a lot of people have already been doing lots of through lockdown. So let's have a look. So let me and Pebble just sort of explain a little bit what we've set up here. So I've just got my bird feeder station here, which I've got some seeds, and some nuts. I've got friendly stations, um, RSPB friendly uh, feeding stations. And I've also got this log that I've set up here because I want the birds to come and sort of perch on here so that when I shoot them from over there in this direction, I've got some nice sort of background that, that's going to create some nice bokeh. And in here, I've also squeezed some um, suet ball as well. So hopefully they'll come and peck it out. And I've had some um, tree creepers, I think, and nut hatches. Probably, I think they're mostly nut hatches. And I've thought really carefully about where I've placed these based on the sun in the morning. So it's the evening at the moment, and the sun's over in that direction. Um, so if anything lands on here, then it's pretty much in shade here because there's a lot of trees shading it, but it's probably not the perfect light. In the morning though, the sun rises just over there. I'll be shooting almost into the sun. It'll hopefully backlit the birds a little a, a little bit but more importantly it's going to light up some of these grasses and if they're wet in the morning it creates amazing bokeh and background so I really thought about where I've placed these. Uh, I've got a water bath over there which is um, just because I felt a bit sorry for the birds not going to take any photos and it was just getting hot so but it's really good and this is my little bird sanctuary I'm really excited about it I think the birds are going to like it well they do like it it's been here for about a week now um, and it's just a question of camping out in my camper van and I can get up really early and then just jump down and get into position. So let's give that a go. Actually before I show you in here if we're going to make it into a hide, we need some camouflage. Come on, Pebs. Okay, it's worked incredibly well. We've got the camo on, and you can see here that I've just got a little outlet for my 500 millimeter lens. Now it may be if I'm shooting my 70 to 200, I'm just going to have to lift this up a little bit, but I think it'll work well. Um, and it covers all this side, so hopefully the birds won't be as scared by the car being here. I'm really excited now about the morning and trying to get some of these amazing garden birds and seeing what I can shoot. So I thought it'd be a good idea just before I come in for the evening to show you around a little bit in the camper van. So, as you can see, um, there's a lot of space when, when the bed's up, I can sit up here. At the front, these seats swivel round, which is really good. And um, 
you know, it's really a really comfortable van to, to live in, especially for just one person. The other things here are there's lots of storage. So I've got a drawer here um, that I put my cutlery in. I've got another drawer here that I have my kettle in. Um, and then there's another drawer that I put a divider in here. Um, so I've got a set of dividers in here. And this is really great. I've got my tea bags, I've got my ketchup. Um, and then all sort of condiments in there and then there's a really good sliding door which means that it doesn't get in the way so I've got lots of other things in there all my pots and pans so storage wise it's really good this is where the sink is so this is fantastic um, and then I've also got power as well so here I've got um, my Nikon charger plugged in <laughs> the advantage if you've got a hookup is having power and being able to charge is, is really good so if I just go and sit over here, there's some storage here um, where I can hang clothes up, so that's fantastic. Um, and then there's another bit of storage back here where you can put things in, uh, which is quite roomy really. I've not used this yet in any of the trips that I've done, but it's pretty good. And then I've also got some storage under the seat, which I can, which I've been putting sort of tripods in, and um, I've got like a gorilla pod here tripod extension but it's just it's just good for things that you just want to keep out of the way um, maybe get a bit dirty so storage wise this is really good so I'm just getting everything set up now and I'll come back later ready for this evening and hopefully get some birds in the morning after I've slept up above one more thing actually this cushion you've probably seen here and you're probably thinking why have I not got a tripod um, so I've not got a gimbal, a big gimbal for my camera and I don't think it'd fit up very well here anyway. I've only got a ball head but this cushion really is, is a good way of just um, resting my, my camera but still having a bit of movement and then if I want to I can, I can pick it up. So it really is a good way of just putting my camera down. Also it reduces noise when I pick it up and put it down so I don't frighten the birds. Oh, I've forgotten how cosy it is in here so I'm all set up for the morning. As I spoke about before, it's going to be best in the morning. The birds are obviously going to be more active and I'm going to have backlighting, which is the crucial thing for the background and for the birds as well. Um, I've got my cameras set up. So I've got two Z7s with one with a 70 to 200 f 2.8. This is my 13, 14 year old lens um, and one with a 500 millimeter f 5.6. This is prob I'm probably just a little bit too close for this and, and obviously I can move, I can just move back a bit. But maybe in another morning when I try again I might just position my van in a different um, position. But um, yeah, I'm all, I'm all ready, all set. Now the problem is I've got a squirrel called Phil and he's cheeky and, and he keeps disturbing the birds. I think he's gone to sleep now but I'm hoping that Phil doesn't come back tomorrow morning. I've got lots of photos of Phil and not many of birds so far. So what I'm really trying to do is capture some of the behaviour of the birds, try and get them in a slightly different position, but really importantly I'm trying to get a nice composition in the background, I'm not just trying to get them centre frame, I'm trying to just sort of really think about that composition. So I'm all set for the morning, alarm set for 3.30 so I can get down here all set up ready for dawn. Just pray for the weather. Right, I think it's time to get down for the night because I'm going to be up really early in the morning. So, I'm going to get up. So one thing about this camper van is that this mattress up on the top is super comfy. So I'm looking forward to tonight. And you just have to sort of climb up and just stand up the seat to get up, just like this. But it's fairly roomy up here and it's got, got some nice lights. And it's pretty good. The only thing is that these you can't see out of, so you unzip them and you can't really see out of them very much. But it's loads of room, super comfy, sort of spring-loaded mattress. Oh. But these aren't great. You can't quite see out of these at the side. And I usually have my head at this end, and that's the view down. So that's it. Good night. See you in the morning. Oh, morning everybody. So my alarm's just gone off. Just after 4am. I had a quick look outside and it looks fantastic. 
I think we're going to get the, the sun really early, which is just exactly what I wanted. So the advantage of a camper van is I don't have far to go. Okay, so I've just tried a few test shots. It's so dark still outside. Um, it's probably just giving you a false impression at the moment, but I, 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 the sun just hasn't quite come up yet. So I'm just going to wait a few more moments. Hopefully in maybe 10 or 15 minutes it'll come up, but it'll just mean that I can just get everything set. So I'm just going to open the window. So the cows are just going past at the moment. Um, we live on a farm and I'm just getting milked. But um, it's just, the sun's just popping up now. You can probably see the glow on me and it's looking really good. Uh, I've just had a nut hatch that's just been, so hopefully that'll come back. And they are landing on the branch, so that's good news. The good thing about this camper van is it's got a heater. Um, now I fitted the heater after um, I got the camper van um, because I couldn't find a camper van with a heater um, built in. And it's jumped underneath the seat. There's a little switch up there I can switch on and it heats it up really quickly. So what I'm doing is I'm just switching it on every now and then just to keep warm. Oh, here's one now. There's one now. Oh, his feathers are getting back wet. So it looks fantastic through here now. What I'm trying to do is just wait for a bird to come and up to the feeder and oh there's one now, there's one now. I've got a tracking on. That was fantastic. So all, all I'm doing now is waiting for a bird to come up to the feeder and the boker in the background just looks absolutely amazing. Um, and if I can just get it just off to the left there, then hopefully I'll get one just approaching it. I've got it quite a high. Here's one there, look. The same blue tip that keeps coming back because I can tell by its head. So there's not many birds coming at the moment. And the best of the light's probably gone. It's really early. So I've got about a 30 minute window with a really beautiful golden light. And unfortunately no birds arrived when that happened. Um, but there's still some opportunities. I've just got to wait and see what I can find. The nut hatch keeps coming back and occasionally goes down the log. What I want to do is try and get it just, just on the log pointing down. But there's some really nice light on the grasses at the back now. Beautiful morning, so still. So Phil's in the tree. He's just watching. Oh, Phil's friend's down there. I've not given Phil's friend a name yet, but Phil is, oh, here he comes, here he comes. So it seems that the birds have made friends with Phil and that they're coming up a lot more now when he's there. <laughs> oh, there's a, a blue tick on here. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, there it is, look. Oh, that looks fantastic. There's a blue tit. Just in the place I need it. I'm gonna have to go. So one of the things that I've got is subject tracking on. Um, which is a new feature on the on the Nikon camera, which is so good. They've released it on a firmware, and it just means that the autofocus that wasn't brilliant has just become a lot better now. So I can track. I can track the bird now. Oh, that's so good. So it means that I can get it in focus, reframe, and then get the shot that I'm after. That was fantastic. I think I got the shot then. Yes. So I think I've got some good shots this morning. Oh, there's one, there's one. Oh, it was just on there. 
I think the seam needs to close that a bit. I think they can see me with that just a little bit wider. And um, so I've got some I've got some good shots this morning. Oh there's some there's, oh, there's the nut hatches on, on the far tree over there. It's a slightly wider shot this because it's further away obviously with my 500 millimeter lens but it looks really good it just sort of sets it in its environment a little bit better oh that was so good that was so good I was saying I've, I've got I've got some good shots. The back lighting on the birds really, really worked. It's now about what time is it? It's so it's now 6:15. So it's about an hour and a half after sunrise. And although the light's not quite as warm now, I feel like this has probably been the most active time for the birds feeding. And I definitely think the light's a little bit better backlighting the birds now. But it's definitely a game of patience. One of the things that I really notice is the more time you spend, it's a little bit like landscape photography really, the more time you spend observing rather than taking photos, the more chance you have of, of trying to, it, it's to get that better composition, to think about how the birds are interacting with the logs, where they're going, where they're coming from, and then you might be able to get them in different locations rather than just on the logs that I've set up. It's been fantastic. <laughs> oh, a beautiful morning. Doesn't get better than this. <laughs> So I've put the heating on. I've, I've just taken a break now, just as I've taken a break, there's about five birds there, so they're really waking up now. Um, and I've got a kettle on. Obviously I've got this up now, so with this up, I can't shoot out of the window cleanly without going through the glass, so I'm gonna have a break, have a cup of tea, and um, a little bit of breakfast. <laughs> They're just teasing me the birds over there. So one of the great things about this camper van is um, that it's got a really, really big fridge. Unfortunately, it is. Just put my lens cap on here. Unfortunately, it's underneath where all the cameras are here. So. Yeah, so it's got a pretty big fridge. So in here I've got my milk from the local farmer. In fact, from the cows that we saw go past before. Um, and then we've got in here, I put some dividers in. So I can sort of split things up a little bit better. I've got a tea bag, Yorkshire tea, some sugar. Fantastic. So it's time, I think, just to look at the photos now. So I'm going to go in and have a look at them and maybe print a couple out and then we can have a look at the printed results and talk a little bit more about what worked and what didn't. Right, I am back in my studio now and I printed out some of the photos here um, of one of the blue tip. We'll go through these in a second, another one of the blue tip and one of the nuthatch. Now, one of the things that I mentioned was, I was trying to take a photo of the birds in flight with the bokeh behind and, and them being backlit, and I completely failed. Um, I, I, I got a lot of birds that just weren't there or I didn't get their shutter speed right. But I thought, I know somebody 
who might be able to give me a top tip on that. So why don't we try and see if I can ring Morton. So, I know that he's been on an island recently, so hopefully he'll be around. Um, he's not answering. Oh, here he is. Hi, Morton. Hey, Nigel. What's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, thanks. As, as you know, I've, I've been shooting um, birds from my um, camper van. <laughs> yeah, 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 you told me about it. That's awesome. How, how, how did it all turn out? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, I, I I got some good shots. So I got some good shots. I think I shared one of them with you um, of a nut hatch, which I thought wor worked out quite well. What, what, it was tricky though. One of the things that I really struggled with was shooting birds in flight. Um, so I, it was really nice because I was I was shooting into the sun, and. Um, so, so I had my long lens, my 500 millimeter lens, and I was shooting in, into the sun, and, and the birds were backlit. But I, I really struggled to get, I, I wanted to try and get them as they were taking off or they were coming into the bird feeder. And, and that was really hard. And I didn't know whether it was just me doing something wrong or whether there's a particular technique or, or something that you might be able to give us a top tip on. Uh, you mean like that you want them like when they are in the air flying into the bird feeder? Yeah, either in the air flying into the bird feeder or just taking off and obviously my reactions were never quick enough and I didn't know whether it would be a good idea to try and set a camera up that was closer or something, I just didn't know. Uh, I, it's always a challenge but I mean if, if they are coming in when, when they are landing near the bird uh, feeder and you want to capture that you know, when they, do you remember when you were visiting me and we were photographing the, the Jays? Yeah. Yeah, like the same thing where you like, you have to figure out a focus, like manual focus a little behind. You, you, you see, they almost go at the same pattern. They always almost come from the same direction. Yeah. Then you set the, the, the camera up on the tripod, find the composition and f try to figure out the, 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 the distance. And then you just basically take your eyes away from the camera and you watch, like you sit and watch there and hold your, uh, hold your camera like this and then full speed. And then when you can see already, when you can see the bird is coming in long before it actually hits that point, you just press and hold because eventually after three or four uh, arrows, uh, it will be there. Because usually, you know, there's this tiny shot of lag and from you see it, so you press it, even though you have half pressed and everything, to, to you actually get the photo. Yeah. And it's just, it's always like half a bird or something like that. Yeah, that's exactly, I've got lots of half birds. Yeah, and especially if you have the, uh, especially if you have that uh, backlight, you know how out of focus can struggle in backlight. Yeah. It's really, really, sometimes it just go hunting like this, this, this. Uh, so, uh, at least for the cameras I have tried, it's never been possible to like take these small birds so fast. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, actually. I hadn't thought, I think the, the, the good tip there as well is taking your eye away from the camera because I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about just, you know, thinking about looking at them coming in. And, 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 as you, and now you say it, they do follow a very similar path. Um, yeah. So I'll have to try that again. Yeah, I, I think uh, that that's what I do with the magpie, you know, with, with, you know the, the J, when it wants to land on that little root. Yeah. You know, it's from the little tree we we're looking at and I just have my camera the good composition and then when I see it leaves it's just like yeah for the best yeah that's a brilliant tip that's a brilliant yeah. tip so what 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 are you up to oh I've just returned from the you know I I, uh, I showed you the little island when we were talking I put yeah on the camera I just returned to home today because I was there to photograph the badgers and do some sound recordings, uh, but the bat just doesn't like high uh, rain and, and high winds. Yeah. And I couldn't do the, the sound recordings uh, uh, because all the wind. So uh, I took home a day earlier and now I'm just, see, all the mess <laughs> in, the, in the little office. And uh, yeah, just unload the footage, look at the few batch of photos I got and have a cozy weekend, maybe some editing. Yeah. I try to uh, procrastinate from that. But... <laughs> yeah, I know what you feel. I know what you feel like there, yeah. Oh, well, well, thank, thanks for that top tip. That's really, really useful. And um, I'll let you get back to your unpacking. Yeah, send me some more photos. I want to see what you've been doing. Yeah, okay, I will do. Okay, okay. take care. Yeah, bye, bye. Oh, so 
that was really useful. Um, hopefully you got that, uh, such a great tip for taking birds in flight. I'm definitely gonna try that out again and I'll share my photos on Instagram, so make sure you follow me, the, the link's below. Um, right, let's have a look through some of these images that I, I took of the birds just on, on the log. So first of all, what worked really well was the backlight. Um, so, so you can see that it did two things really. One, it created this really nice sort of bokeh outer focus elements. And the bokeh on this 500 millimeter lens is so, so nice. You get these really nice round rings. But more importantly, it created this really nice edge to the bird. Um, and, I, and I really like that. Now, this is a great image, I really, I really like it um, as a portrait, but I still don't quite think that it's um, captured, you know, the exact, uh, I suppose the character of the nuthatch. I was watching it and, um, you know, one of the things the nuthatch did really well was sort of peck away in, in the logs, also on the tree stump as well. What I really like is it over on the tree, and I got a few images like that, but over on the tree, um, and backlit there with a slightly wider angle, maybe a two or three hundred millimeters rather than five hundred millimeters. But yeah, I was I was quite pleased with it, and and it's definitely it's definitely sharp. Um, so this one of the blue tip, I, I really like. So um, you can see that you know it's come out really really well, and the colours and the way that the colours sort of reflect on the on the blue tip as well. That those greens and blues look really really nice. So. Yeah, I really liked, I really liked this, it's super sharp. Again, I didn't quite think I got the character right. I got one of the blue tip, um, interesting speaking to Morton, of it just jumping. Um, so I did get one of it moving and it looked really good, but it was blurred, so I didn't quite get the shutter speed right there. So work in progress that, but I, I, I like this. I think this is a, a nice portrait again of, of, of a blue tip. And then the other one that I liked was this one. Um, and again, it's not quite worked this. There's again room for improvement, but this was when the sun was a lot lower. So you can see that the bokeh is much warmer. It's a much warmer color. But unfortunately, it got up to a point where I was shooting like directly in and the sun was hitting there and I couldn't shield um, the sun from getting a really bad flare. And I feel that like flare has probably just let down the, the, the image a little bit. Um, I think what I needed was to shoot this just a little bit earlier where the sun just went be below a branch, but when I was trying to get that shot, no birds were landing on here. So it's just created, you know, I just don't quite like the bird too, 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 too well on that. But yeah, you know, I was quite pleased with my results. Um, certainly the camper van worked really, really well. It was, it was a really great place to do it, being able to sleep and get up early and just sort of, you know, drop down in, in, in below with, with the heater on was, was fantastic. Um, and it's such a magical moment as well when you're with the birds out there and you can just, just witness their behavior. So I'm definitely gonna do it again. I've been taking a lot of pictures of birds recently um, and I, I've, I've got a little bit better, I think, at wildlife photography, um, but you know, this is still in my garden and it's, it's fairly simple really. Um, and it's things that you, you can all do at home, um, even with uh, a 70 to 200 lens, you don't need a, a 500 millimeter lens. Uh, and that's it really, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you, it was something different for me, um, a bit of fun. And if you have, then give it, a, give it a like and comment below if you've got any top tips for wildlife photography or how you go about shooting birds in your garden. Um, I'd really like to, to read those comments. Um, and yeah, thanks ever so much. Until, I, you know, I haven't published a midweek video for three weeks now because I still have been so busy. Um, and I'm also working with Nikon on a video for them um, on, on something that I can't tell you about at the moment, but it's really exciting. Um, so it's been super busy. I'm really, really gonna try and get a midweek video out next week, but if not, I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.